I realized that I haven't done an episode of Mondays in the Dressing Room in a little while. These are videos posted on Mondays um, where I talk about wild and crazy things that have happened to me in the club. They're called that because at most clubs, including the one that I've worked at the longest, Mondays are pretty slow days. And in between waves of customers, my coworkers and I used to hang out in the dressing room and swap stories. So welcome to our circle. This one is about customers, regulars really, who were so bad that in hindsight, I wish I had never danced for them. I think I've mentioned this on this channel before, but my very first paid dance wasn't a dance at all. It was a 30 minute champagne room or an hour champagne room, I forget which. I basically walked out of the dressing room my first day, walked up to the bar, sat down for less than 15 seconds and was immediately drugged to the back. On my way there, I was stopped by every other dancer who worked in the club. Half were worried that I would think that this guy um, was a typical customer and quit on my first dance. And half were concerned with telling me that if you push my boundaries too far and I was uncomfortable, then I was allowed to walk out. Um, this guy had a reputation <laughs> and not a good one. Once we got to the room, I was a little bit confused. This guy didn't push my boundaries at all. He was friendly, um, he was nice. Um, and he didn't say anything weird or out of the ordinary. And I started to wonder if the other dancers thought I was a much more fragile baby stripper than I actually was. It was many days later and many champagne rooms later that this guy finally felt comfortable pulling out what it was that he had freaked the other dancers out with. He was a former gynecologist, he was retired, and he liked the dancers to pretend that they were coming to him as a doctor um, at like the age of around 13 years old. So he was an unmitigated creep. If I could go back in time, I never would have danced for him. But if I could go back in time, I would go back to when he was in med school, show up and cut his bits and pieces off. So it wouldn't be an issue in the first place. Since I can't go back in time, I spend some time wondering if Engaging in fantasies with guys like that um, keeps the guys from acting them out in the real world or if it encourages it. This is another where I don't really have an answer. I don't believe that seeing sex workers um, makes men more violent or less respectful to women. But I think role play inside a club or out of it is not the best way to get your mind off something like that. Um, and anyway, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't dance for him. And later in my career, I wouldn't have danced for him. It was also very early on in my dancing career that I met, let's call him Mr. Above the Law. Mr. Above the Law was a lawyer um, that was pretty important in my town. And more importantly, and more relevant to me, he was one of my manager's lawyers. He didn't have to respect any of the rules of the strip club. And um, in fact, they'd put him in a little room all by himself with a curtain so that nobody could see what he got up to except people who worked there. I had just tons of weird experiences with Mr. Above the Law. Um, the weirdest probably being when he came in on his birthday and bought somewhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes of individual dances back to back. Um, and spent the entire time I was dancing for him singing happy birthday to himself. Well, not himself so much as the one body part that I was throwing the party for. The reason Above the Law makes this list is that I eventually realized that his enjoyment of my dances was dependent on me being uncomfortable and not actually wanting to dance for him. And that's just gross. I made a ton of money off of him, but not enough for it to be worth helping him get off on what he definitely saw as borderline sexual assault. Of course, it could be worse. He could have been a white supremacist kidnapper and torturer. 
but then he'd have been this next guy. So for a while we had this guy who liked to sit in the seat by the bar that was the closest to the front door. It was so close to the front door that he would regularly get hit with the front door. He was a talker and he liked to buy dances. And I really should have seen now in hindsight um, that he had American History X written all over him. He had a shaved head and though I don't really recall any like Nazi or Klan imagery in his tattoos, he was covered in them and he mixed them with you know, a nice button up shirt and slacks like some white supremacists do, you know, once you have the haircut. Um, but my dumbass did not pick up the signs. Um, my dumbass waited until I was in a champagne room with him um, and he like went off on people of color all over the place um, for me to realize what he was. Luckily that champagne room happened to end right away which is really good because um, <laughs> I probably would have, well, I, I had the option to leave, but had I left a champagne room, I would have been worried about getting in trouble um, when it was just what somebody said and not somebody like trying to assault me, um, which would get me out easy. Um, but um, what probably would have happened is I would have been scared of getting in trouble and stayed in the room and then had to listen to his opinions long enough that I punched him. Then I would have gotten in trouble anyway. Also, this guy was not the guy to punch, as it turns out. I discovered why a little bit later. So I was sitting at the bar a couple weeks later, um, and he came in, and he was sitting next to me, and I was ignoring him for all I was worth, which is maybe why he told me this story. Um, apparently, he had been married, um, and his wife had spent like thousands of dollars of their money without his say so. And he, and then she'd left him. And he had like chased her down and him and a gang of his friends had like taken her to an abandoned place and tortured her and ransomed her back to her parents for the amount of money that she had spent. Um, and he was just out of jail because of it. And we knew he was just out of jail, but we didn't have any idea about that. So. Um, he told the story to me and he told it to some other girls and it got around the club really fast and the bartender overheard it and before long nobody would talk to him or even serve him drinks and um, because men who would never hurt the women they work with or the women in their families won't think twice about hurting a stripper so if he's willing to kidnap and torture a um, person that he at one point loved, then he is not a safe person for us to be around. He wouldn't even be if we weren't strippers, but especially as strippers. And so we basically just fired him and he, um, he got tired of no one ever talking to him and he left and didn't come back, finally. While he was telling me that story, I was remembering every single dance and every single champagne room that I'd ever done with him. And um, it, has stuck with me and I know exactly how much money uh, I made off that f***er and I'd give every cent back to never have come in contact with him. So the moral of this story is don't be like me, listen to your gut and if your gut tells you you don't need to be doing a dance, reconsider how much you need that money. Sometimes you need money enough that you do dances you regret, um, but sometimes you can avoid it. That's it for today's Monday in the Dressing Room. If you found value or entertainment in this video, please like and subscribe. This isn't a super fun topic, but if there's any dancers in the viewers, um, feel free to add your list of dances that you wouldn't have done if you could go back and change things. A lot of my audience is either new dancers or people thinking about becoming dancers. I think that it's a good idea to make sure that they understand that they're not alone. I know that for myself, this list barely scratches the surface, but this time I'm focusing on people who were monstrous inside, not necessarily monstrous in an actual dance um, to talk about. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great week.